This season, Pushweta stockies, we shot in Bombay, we shot in Goa, we shot in Delhi. 7200 years of businesses which are still thriving. On a journey with me this season for these heritage businesses and the exceptional personalities which still run it. Stay with me on this season. Enjoy. I'm standing in front of the most stunning old oceanfront villa owned by the Dempo family and there is no way you've not seen its name all over Goa, billboards and properties. This episode I caught up with him to tell me all about this family, the heritage and how they had witnessed Goa in its earlier ages. Today we are here with Mr. Vivek Dempo, 16th generation of the Dempo family. Hard, hard man to catch, I'm telling you. Speaks about three local vernacular languages, fabulous English and Hindi, and I'm very proud of him. Mr. Vivek Dempo, Hello, thank you for Shreta. having us here. Thank you so much, what a beautiful property. This is steep, steep in history, 500 years. No, this is around 150 years. This is 150 years, years old. And this used to be your... Family house. residence. Like you know, the whole family used to stay here. So this 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 house, what architecture is this? It's like Indo-Portuguese architecture. Mm. You can see the columns mm. and the frames around the windows mm. and the railings. This is typical Indo-Portuguese architecture. There's European influence. This is a temple. This is your family? So a private temple. Okay. This is Dutta Maharaj's temple. But our family deity is Lakshmi Narayan Mamaya. Okay. Yeah. And this, this used to be actually the family's earlier on. Talking about 70, 80 years ago. The school, the teachers used to learn, this, uh, learn you know, their studies and all in the school out here. Oh, lovely. Yeah. So, this is one of the courtyards? The first courtyard. And there's a door out there, and if you go in, it's the second courtyard. And all around that are the rooms with the different parts of the family used to stay. So, at one point, how many people stayed in this house? Maybe at its peak? What my father told me, and there were around at, at its peak, it was 30 or 40 people in the family and 50 servants. So there were like a hundred people yes, staying in this house? Yes, including we had water buffalo's own milk, own school. It was like a... Oh yeah, so your own school, so you... Yeah. Everything was all in-house, yeah. you really didn't need anything else. Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming this is the temple. Yes, yes, yes. yes. This is the sacred place. The like praying place and also for certain pujas we have, you know, on wooden parts we sit mm. and food is served, strict vegetarian food, no onion, no garlic, one banana leaves. These are all the deities, including our food day, Lakshmina and Mamaya. So that's... Uh, yeah. Adman, yeah. Uh, all, all the Hindu... All the Hindu, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I, I've never seen anything like yes. this. Yes, it's like a collage, you know. And, it's beautiful. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. And, but this is old school kitchen, right? Old school kitchen. So I think these are the things you know, that are right? supposed to be typical, you know, old style. And that's called the chula. Yeah, chula. Yeah. These are the chula. How many meters did we have? Huh? Oh, it was huge because sometimes uh, when the pujas were held, two, three hundred people, people were invited. So much prasad has to be, you know, in terms of rice, in terms of, uh, you know, sweets. This Everything was going to happen. And also, just the only exhaust they had is two windows. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's some more there. There's some more exhaust there. Yeah. But you see, those days everything was made in house. Correct. There were no hotels, restaurants. Yeah, no one went. So you've restored a lot of the old uh, scenery and everything. ceilings and the roofs and. Yes, a lot of this is old, but the certain things we had to put in new boulders and things like that because you know there's always wear and tear over such a long period of time. Mm. But all these are the original ones. So the family is interested in keeping it. Like of course, we have just uh, we have just completed completed the renovation. Okay. So the family is very much interested in uh, renovating and keeping our you know we have to preserve something. Of course, you have to. Uh, but I haven't seen a lot about Dempo Nivas at all. It's not on the internet. Some books, maybe. Some books have but, come. But, but yes, I some don't books. think a lot of new generation has. No, you know we don't publicize we much. Don't it's publicize. a very conservative and quiet family. But thank you for letting me in. No, it is beautiful. My Absolutely. Pleasure, my pleasure. So this uh, beautiful Dempo Nivas where we are sitting right now, yes. how, how big is it? I couldn't see the end of it. And we, it's totally, you know, we've built a wall that if you see the whole area, it's a little over seven acres. Okay. And uh, In this, the of? Uh, it's just uh, one and a half, two kilometers of Panjim. Okay. You know, you saw how yeah, less yeah, yeah. time it took us to come from Panjim. Yeah. And the house as such, I think around 30, 35,000 square feet, two, two courtyard house. One question, I have been very intrigued with the name Dempo. I have 
not really heard that name anywhere and it has been synonymous with Goa, I've been coming here for so long and yes I've heard about the Tempo family here, they they own this, they own that. Uh, tell me a little bit about the name itself and how it came into its name. Yes, it's, it's quite a peculiar name. Uh, <laughs> what, from what I know about it, our original name was called Borke. And then after that, it became, uh, uh, you know, uh, a person in Kokri, a person who walks with large strides. Oh. It's called the Dep. Dep. So they used to say, ha, that house, whose house is it? Depecha girl. Means the, that is the house of the person who takes the long strides. So people started calling us Dempe. Tell us a little bit about how Goa was then as when you heard in your stories. Yes. And what you perceive it as now. You see, those days, uh, Goa was, uh, it was a Portuguese colony, you know, uh, the Goa was taken over, I think, by the Portuguese, by Alfonso de Albuquerque, he came and he conquered it in 1508 or so. And then uh, there was a lot of inquisition also, like they had come, there was trade and there was also propagation of Christianity. The two main things of Portuguese were this. As far as trade is concerned, the trade was more with uh, Goa was also, they were using Goa to rule their African colonies. I see. Such as Mozambique and Angola. Is it easy to get there from Goa? No, by ship. I mean, those days, I mean, I, I thought, I, I, ships I like there, no? ships like this, you know, it, uh, probably now it is, you just sit in a plane and, you know, go like fly, you know. But uh, those days, I think it used to take a month. And as uh, soon as 1900, the year 1900, we had these uh, sail ships carrying a few passengers but 75 to 80 percent cargo and uh, going up and down. Up and down, Mozambique, Africa. Uh, Africa, Mozambique. At that time, Mozambique was known as Nova Sofala. And what are they shipping? I and mean, what, what, what is commodities? Ah, the commodities, uh, you see, we were, uh, we had a lot of coconut plantations. So coconut is known as the fruit of life. And the coconut is a very important, even today, uh, you know, we use coconut oil, we use coconut in our food. Uh, you make ropes, fiber ropes out of coconut, all sort of, sorts of things. So there was a lot of export of coconuts and um, coming back with silks and uh, you know, lot of uh, various cargoes like you know, uh, building equipments, tiles. I mean that time, that at that point of time, I, go, I guess certain parts of the world or most of the world was just developing. We are talking about five, six hundred years ago, you know, it must have been a total different scene at that point, yes. And uh, we are looking at absolute commodities this time and now you have come into the age where now it's real estate and you're getting into We were into mining, we were into shipping, but uh, what happened was in the early 19th century, um, there was a slight depression in our family. And at that point of time, my grandfather, Mr. Vasantrao Dempo, who is considered as the patriarch in the last 150 years, I mean, 100 years or whatever, he took over. And he started starting from scratch the business, you know. Wow. Yeah. And it was not all glamorous. It's not that he just took over, wore a suit and came and sat in the office and... No, he was working very hard. He was doing small agencies and people were like, Oh, he's doing that. He's such a big landlord doing these agencies. Slowly he started car agencies. Slowly he started real estate. Slowly he went into mining. Then he went to shipping. Then people were like, this man means business. You know how people are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the bigger you are, the better they are to you. Maybe not from inside, but from outside. Yeah. At one point, uh, employing 10,000 people. I mean, 30 years ago, of 40 years ago, you were almost directly or indirectly employing 10,000 people. Those, those days, you know, that way. What does it take to, uh, to manage that at this level now? Because you have, I think one thing is onward, both. Yes. You get into various verticals. You see, now what has happened is uh, everyone, like as the families grow, you know, factions, they do have a sort of a understandable separation and things like that. And um, all my uncles are doing something or the other. And most of the group has gone to my elder cousin. But I started my own again. Okay. I do boutique hotels and I'm a part in the property. And uh, I'm also studying food processing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Speciality preserves and jams and things like that. So, but I wouldn't say, you know, even if I'm, uh, I wouldn't, I, my, my grandfather is always uh, something, even if he's not there today for me to look up to. But I might not be as smart as him, but I'm very happy and it's an insurance for me 
that a part of his blood is always, always in my veins also. How is it to manage, to, to keep the balance of heritage as well as growth? What kind of a responsibility does the family actively participate in or do? Well, I was, I was always uh, pro-heritage. And off lately, we have done, as uh, yesterday we went to the uh, Casa Dempo, that house has been re restored. This house where we are sitting has been restored recently. And I also personally do restoration projects like some of our houses which I bought and I've converted into small inns or hotels, boutique hotels. My Cochin Hotel also was the Brook Monty Company Bungalow which I've restored. So I think I'm doing my part as far as the heritage is concerned. Business part, I'm slowly growing. <laughs> do you often have uh, family conversations and that's not a recent conversation yeah. you could have had it when you were children. Yeah. Is sit back and reflect on, on what a glorious past it has been. What were the conversations like? No, no. And conversations, so we've always been told what our history was. But that's nothing to be too pompous about. We've also told uh, the values, you know, basic values in life, what a person should. Can be the first three, four values you remember? Maybe See, because uh, let not money go to your head. Always strive for something. Be, uh, be polite. You know, things like that. And we, we, our family, Dempo family has been known, you know, we have done so many donations, my, my ancestors especially, and Mr. Vasandrao Dempo, and so on and so forth, we, we are still doing today. Uh, not only for our community, but the, all communities, you see. So when the name Dempo comes, it is not like our only Hindu, like Dempo means for everyone. Like, you know, it's like an institution it had become. Lovely. That's what everyone should strive for, you see, I, according to me, I mean. You're, uh, you also have newspapers and publications which you know. Yes, my grandfather, he started in 63, I think, the oldest English daily of Goa, the Navin Times. Oh, achha. Yeah, and then there was subsequently a Marathi paper. The first press in India came in Goa, 1556, I think the first yeah. press machine. Yes, in yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And then I didn't realize, I assumed the first printing press was in Bombay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Quite possible, quite possible. There were small papers before uh, us also. I mean, maybe in the 1800s also, for that matter, you know, that's quite possible. Yeah. So I, I, um, I come to Goa twice a year, twice a year, yeah. three, ten years. And um, besides the obvious, we go to the bars and the nightclubs. Uh, if you really steer off the highways, it's steep with the history. Yes. Um, I would like you to tell me what Goa was like back, maybe 1950s and you were a child. What did it no, I was not born that time. When my dad was uh, in his young days. What, what was it like? From what I've, what, from my, what my seniors have told me, first of all, it was much more green. Okay. Secondly, you're right. Beautiful buildings. Okay, Indo-Portuguese, European, different types of architecture. Now, unfortunately, a lot of modern buildings have suddenly come in between. You know. There's no standardization. There are two, three heritage buildings. Suddenly, you'll find some ugly buildings there, you know. And the whole concept has changed. Of course, it has not totally spoiled. Goa still, according to me, in whole of India, is, though the smallest state is the most beautiful state. And I'm not saying that because I come from there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there were old cars. There were not too many cars, but there were old cars. And another very important thing is Goa was Portuguese. And um, People had Portuguese, you know, passports or whatever. Like yeah, yeah, my, like my father, my father. And then when independence took place in 19 December 61, then they had to decide whether you are going to keep, you can't keep in India, you can't keep dual passports. So either you uh, take your money to whatever your bank money to Lisbon or you go to Europe and get a Portuguese passport or you become Indian. And ships used to come, people used to come by. Ships was the mode, right? Before the plane. Yeah, planes were there, of course, but they were very uh, sparingly coming. And the Portuguese, uh, they had TAIP, Transport Air Indies, the Portuguese. They had three big super constellation planes, which was their airline. So, what I was saying is, in 1954, one uh, Portuguese ship uh, fired on an Indian trawler. And there was a big misunderstanding. So there was a blockade. So India said, we are going to do nothing with Goa. So that's the time when it became a free port. 
the Portuguese realized that they needed basic commodities besides cars and all sugar, rice, you know, all these things. So the so make it no tax and the, uh, make it a free port. And that's where the entrepreneurial skill also developed even furthermore. And my grandfather must have got a boost because uh, I found one of his telexes. He's gone to Burma with his, uh, with his um, uh, Jewish partner, Mr. Eisenberg at that time. And he has imported 30,000 tons of sugar for Goa state and, uh, and uh, rice, rice from Burma and sugar came from Vietnam. And that time a 5,000 ton ship was considered to be a big cargo steamer. You know? Six of those came to Goa. So he was doing government contracts from, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, you know, basic commodities which are required. The onions and potatoes came from Holland. Oh, not from no, and my dad had gone to, he was sent to London by my grandfather to study. So if he wrote letters, he, had, he my grandfather had to open a small office in Pakistan that time because there was blockade. If the letter went to India, they would tear it up, anything from Goa. So he had to write to uh, so-and-so Goa, name of the person address, uh, to Nova Goa, uh, uh, via Karachi. So this super constellation was, he went, how he went, he took the super constellation flight, TIP flight. He went from Goa to Karachi, it used to stop every three hours or whatever. Karachi it stopped, it went to Lebanon and then to London. You, you get onion and potatoes in India, like somewhere nearby? No, uh, no, but you needed to import, na? see people grow in the fields and all, but that is very small quantity. Even today, even today the, uh, the vegetables, 40 trucks come to Goa from Belgaum, of course Belgaum is a part of India. But uh, Goa was not uh, that self-sufficient that way. Uh, rice they grew, rice they grew, but there must have been some depression of rice also that time. You know, less quantity. Like so, uh, interestingly, Goa is one of the uh, finest examples of uniform civil code, if I may. Yes, yes. Uh, you see, Goa was, uh, uh, of course, just like India was colonized by the British. Goa was colonized by the Portuguese. But for much more time, almost I think 450 years, if I'm not mistaken. So obviously when it became India also after 61 or early 62, it's not going to change overnight. So a lot of things have remained. So as you said, for today when we do business, it's the Indian Companies Act like any other Indian in any Indian territory of India. But uh, as a person, there's something called person of Goan origin. We have not joined, not Hindu family, this thing. We have BOI, body of individuals and Portuguese civil for civil and marriage. Oh, I see. Yeah. So right. Portuguese marriage law, I, I do remember that the woman automatically... It's it's both ways. It's a family, they say they did that because it's a family binding law. So 50% as soon as you get married, 50% of your wealth becomes your husband, and 50% <laughs> of your husband's wealth becomes yours. <laughs> so, so, depends, so depends who's richer. Huh? <laughs> no, but that is not the point. The point was to... Uh, to, to to bind the family, to take care of the children, to you know, it is a very uh, it's a very good law. But still, like in I think in uh, Pondicherry, still there's French law. It is French law. Yeah, yeah French there's French. so many places those civil and marriage it's remained. I don't know what the reason is because I am not a lawyer. So. Yeah, yeah, in fact, uh, last time when I was here, I quickly caught uh, quickly uh, cross the High Court, the court here. Yes. But it says High Court. Bombay and then... Yeah, High Court of Bombay in Goa, something like that. High Court of Bombay. I think that is the thing because, you know... There was High Court here. There was, but uh, I think that's the Bombay High Court is taking care of that. First, a lot of things from Bangalore used to take care of when, when Goa became India. A lot of things, from, because it was not developed na, in the sense that India was just taking... Yeah, so that Bombay High Court is the same, so it's like a branch because Bombay High Court is like a serious, it's a big High Court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It didn't yeah. stick to me when yes. I saw the name. I'm like, huh, because <laughs> I've never seen it here. Yeah. Uh, future plans for your own self. I know you're a man interested in Bedeen and Islands and Bombay is in my name. Well, uh, I'm not saying I'm old, but uh, <laughs> I think I have normally, I have uh, workable years around uh, 15 years left. Right. So future plan is, um, I mean, to plan for the future for my family. I just have one daughter, so, but uh, you know, I've not really thought about it. <laughs> I'm still living in the present. <laughs> uh, 
do share some story which I want the audience to hear about all your trips to all the Indian little islands. Indian, Indian Ocean, Ocean Islands. Islands. Yeah. Yeah, you see, I'm very fond, like most of the French people, they like boats, islands, and fish. French, no, I'm not French. I'm very much Indian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I'm, uh, you know, last few years, I've made an attempt to go whenever I go for holiday or for something or the other, I find a reason to go to these islands in the Indian Ocean. And I've done a lot of study on them, right from Mauritius to Seychelles to Maldives uh, to Sri Lanka, Madagascar, Reunion. Reunion is a small French island in the Indian Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I know Seychelles with all the beauty pageants happen. Yeah. Only because all the Indians run Yeah. So I really like them because first of all I love islands, I love the sea, the fish, and there's a distinct Indian flavor in these islands. How so? I don't know whether it comes to food or culture because like Mauritius is 72% Indian, Indian origin. Let's put it that way. You know, and in the food, okay, it might be Europeanized. It might not be as masala and spicy as our food. But there's an Indian feeling, you know. Over there. And for me, whatever it is, I'm very comfortable wherever I go with the Indian feeling. I'm not saying I, can, I can't go abroad or something like that. I can go, I can live anywhere. But every four days, I need my Indian food. You know? <laughs> can some bibingkan <laughs> No, I like bibingkan koi, but I like my rice, dal and chicken curry also. Masala curry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like about 100 people later, how many bedrooms are we looking at? <laughs> 30, 30 at least there must be. Those days, you know, everyone used to live together, eat together. So everyone, all the children used to, you know, be together. So there was not like you, you your mother and father was there, but there was some people looking after all the children. So it was like there was... Are you like it's a whole city by itself? Right? It's a whole little, uh, small family institution by itself. You know that, right? Who were the other businesses at that point in Goa, which were, which were growing as depots did? Uh, they in and, in and around Goa, definitely the Salgaukars, the Chauglis, uh, the Timlos, okay. and, uh, and and a couple of other ones. You know, and they were in similar business? More or less, but uh, the Salgaukars, the Dempos and uh, Chauglis were more or less almost in the same business. You know, that Shipping, way. mining. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mining because Goa was, uh, you know, Goa had a lot of iron ore uh, deposits. That's how they got into mining. Once you get into mining, that was a raw material for steel. Now with steel plates, you can make ships. You need ships to carry iron ore. So it's one round thing. Like so a it's a circular. It's a circular. It's, yeah. That's how they got into those businesses. Then the ancillaries come: paint for ships, repair for ships, building of shipping, ship build, ship building, things like that. Where are the sh broken ships going when you go up? Is that like a dockyard or something? No, I mean in India we have Alang. That's. Uh, Alang is in Gujarat for ship breaking. Okay. What do you mean when the ship is scrapped? Yeah, I mean if it's yeah, I don't They scrap it and then they sell the scrap. Now they melt the it's not pieces. Yeah, they, they melt the scrap. Now it's a uh, scrap iron. I don't know how far it's uh, the Fe content, the iron content is stronger, but then they put more iron. They must be doing some process. Um, reflecting back, uh, we we come to Goa, we get some living kapoi, some calamari, fish, local fishes and all. What did you grow up on? What, was it the same as now? Was it a little different? Maybe family See, though I was born and brought up in Mumbai, and that time we didn't get too much holidays from my school, uh, December and May, you know. But uh, we had a, my mother saw that we had a total Goan influence, you know, total Goan influence. And she was an excellent uh, Goan food cook. So we had two, primarily two cuisines in Goa. One is the Hindu cuisine and the Catholic cuisine. And both are as good as one another, I would say. But the Catholic cuisine, they tend to use little vinegar. They are more influenced by Portuguese and European dishes. And they use more meat, like pork and this thing. While the Hindus are more into fish and um, uh, chicken. Chicken and maximum uh, mutton, mutton. Yeah, chicken. Yeah, but the shakuti is this, that, the more or less things are the same. You know? What is the oldest place here? I mean, does it still exist? Exist? No, there's so, it might. There was a hotel called Mandavi Hotel, which I'll... Just, yeah, 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 yeah. It, unfortunately, it is uh, not... Uh, it's shut for whatever reason. But uh, talking about the food, uh, we had fish and all, but there were a lot of vegetarian days because we were a very religious family. And out of 365, at least 150 days, I think, were vegetarian. But 
to you know just to make that up we had always a sweet dish also like you know. <laughs> because the lack of the meat lack of the meat the sweet dish you know one or two sweet dishes also you know. and the airport because when you walk out it looks a lot more like a goa airport than the double a airport It's got that Goa aesthetic going on. I it think the Mopa Airport, the new new Goa Airport, the Mopa Airport has got much more Goan features than the Double M. Double M is just basic, like like Airport Authority of India makes these sort of airports according to the population, big, small, or medium in any of the towns in India. But Mopa has got that GMR, I think, constructed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have done a good job. They have done a real good job. There's a beautiful shopping arcade. Food is also better there. and uh, i i made a good study out there now Mal- malwan devbag beach tarkali beach uh, Ch- chivla beach very nice beautiful price of seafood one third of goa everything but they have got one issue they have got narrow roads go leading there especially malwan so big no no big hotels aren't going to come so 20 room 14 room and at the moment what is happening a tourism product which caters to a up market has not come as yet out there so the middle level tourism is being means the 2500 to 5000 rupees a, a room night with breakfast that sort of a market you know but it is amazing because there are so many jam and pickle manufacturers there the food the seafood available is more abundant than go and more variety it's one third the price but people don't know about it people don't know it at first about people don't know about it because now slowly and steadily for example savantwadi the palace itself the royal family has taken uh, recently uh, uh, part of the rooms around 10 or 12 rooms or 15 rooms and they are now the the the, the prince and the princess is a chef trained chef from europe and america and they are doing a great job now more things like this should come even i am trying to put a product out there but again a five or seven room bungalow where group comes or you can take the room individually but give the good food give you know keep the whole package to understand the region but there are no hotels like 150 200 rooms oh, not, yeah. and they they can't sustain it they'll spoil the place and if 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 you could do one thing for goa what would you do if you had all the resources in the world all the licenses <laughs> everything know. in the world what would be that one thing you would do not to be like uh, not being impartial or I'm not being this thing but try and preserve the identity of goans because goans today we have uh, 1.5 million goans we say out of which that's a population uh, that is 15 lakh goans around 40 lakh tourists coming going besides this in a year 40 lakh yeah so three times the size of the population now out of that 15 lakh also everyone is not a goan you go on origin people like me whether they are hindu whether they are catholic whatever religion but those people have spent 100 years here or their families have spent 100 years that way so they are around 6 lakh out of that or 7 lakhs a lot of goan population is working abroad because they don't get opportunities yeah and tourism also there is but it's not high paying what is it am i missing i mean you have so many big family businesses yeah. and yet a lot of goans Go overseas to not so many handful, not so many. They look so many because Goa is small. <laughs> something like Maharashtra, something like you know, Madhya Pradesh, UP. Those are big states. Rajasthan. Yeah. I will be careful about my behavior in Goa. I've tried. <laughs> I've tried. Thank you for coming thank to the you, show. Thank you. It's a pleasure so, meeting so, you. So nice yeah, meeting yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. After my talk with Vivek Tempo I realized Goa is not just oceans it's religions it's culture it's nature it's history and commerce I think all of us have a responsibility to try to preserve it and give it a lot of love